Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is going to look at Day 15, 2021 Advent of Code Activities, Festivities, Part 1 here of the Chiton uh, puzzle. So here is the Chiton. You are supposed to get yourself from the upper left hand corner to the lower right hand corner, basically going through the least amount of risk and every number is a risk value I guess it only goes from 1 to 9 which makes sense and so if you go you know if you set everything up and you go 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 you can see the bold here you can see that this is this is the path to travel which is actually kind of weird because there's actually too many paths there's a there's a sub path here where you could go this way instead of that way and get you to the exact same point which I will show when I show part of the solution anyway. And so I do not have this complete at the moment, as you can see, and it's not because of lack of trying, it's just it's been 15 days of this. I can't stay up till three in the morning every day. Uh, I just can't do it. And <laughs> so I took an early night. So I just wanted to, but before I go, I just wanted to describe where I'm at with the problem and just show you how computer science, you know, the, how we can work with computer science to find better and better solutions to our problems. So the solution to this, as much as it seems weird, goes back to day 12, at least the beginning of day, like with this here, where the passage pathing, well, I said that right the first time. So the paths, see, I couldn't do it twice in a row. Passage pathing, uh, the, the puzzle here where you're trying to find a path through all uh, how many paths go through all of the caves and all the different rules it's the same kind of idea where I'm trying to go through I'm trying to find the best path and, and you know and that was trying to find all paths but I'm trying but in this case I'm finding all paths but one of them has to be the best path or in this case two of them have to be the best path and I did not keep the code for that when I got when, and I did get an answer at least with the 10 by 10. So I just want to say with the 10 by 10, I got an answer pretty quickly, and I got the 40 I was expected to get. And when I when I upped this to my puzzle data, which is 100, I think, a, is it 100 by 100 or something like that? It's pretty big, right? That That's a pretty big, uh, pretty big path to try to find. You could obviously see that recursion got in the way, and I just, there was too much recursion. I blew out my, my, my stack. You know, my runtime stack, and there was just no way to find the solution. And I did up the runtime stack, found a way to do that, but even when I did do that, it came out to be that uh, that it, it, if it worked at all, it, it didn't still didn't print anything, which is weird. So either I still broke the runtime stack and it just kind of silently failed on me, which is not good, or it, and I've seen this, I was seeing this earlier, and I'll show you my, my code for my, my second solution, is that it wouldn't print anything out until I, until I halted the program. It would look like it would print it out, but it looked like it printed out blank lines. And then when I exited the program, when I stopped it while it was running, that's when it actually printed things out, which is really weird. So I don't know what's the deal with that. If there's like a, a buffer, a print buffer, or something that isn't working right with the system, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. But that okay, so that was the first step where I could at least at least I could get an answer in a in a very quick amount of time for the for the smaller data set. So then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna now use a best first search for this. And so you can look up. I'm you know this is not every little detail when it comes to best first searches, but a best first search was a great way because then I could organize all the paths. And I could organize them and say, well, which path so far have we have we have we used the least risk with? And at that point, when we when we have all we have all these separate paths, all these different p potential paths, and right and go right now, this one's got nine, and that's the lowest one. How about we how about we try to advance the one that has the lowest risk? And so then we and then we try to go further into the into the into our maze. And add those to the to the list of potential paths, and then continue to sort and pick the best risk. Sort and pick the best risk, and try to move, try to move, try to move, try to move, try to move. And then when you finally get to the end, when you find your end position, because you're always picking the best routes, the you know the, the one with the least risk, that when you reach the end, you only have to find one solution because that one is guaranteed to be the the, the one with the lowest risk. And so that was great and all. I'm like, that's a great idea, Brad. 
And so, oops, this is not this is the code from day 12 stuff. This is the similarity. You can watch that video if you're interested in that. But here is my answer here to that. So I pick my data. I, my data ends up as a list of lists. And this is my go-to for trying to figure out if an element is in is in the uh, data or or not. So if I go off the grid, this thing returns me a negative one. Or and if it's not, if it's on the grid, I, I do get the data I'm looking for. It. So this this halt this makes it so I don't crash. I don't want to use any try catch. It's already slow enough as it is. And another little detail that I'll say we'll talk about here. A little detail here is that I'm going to fix this up for part three of this. But just to show you where I'm at right now with my code. So this is this is all my code, and I do get an answer. And so I'm basically keeping track of this is you know, a list of this is not a list of lists. This is basically object-oriented programming, but I hacked it so that, because you can get away with this in Python. You can't really get away with this in uh, other, uh, especially strongly typed languages. Is to say, okay, for right now, and I, right now I have a path, a potential path that has zero risk. These are the places I could go from where I am. I'm not, a, and the, the rules are weird for the club for how you start and how the first square doesn't count for risk. It's just kind of weird. And then this is the end position. I probably don't even need this one. I probably could keep this out of here and speed things up um, you know, and go from hours to maybe save <laughs> a less, you know, I don't know. It's that This is a very slow way of doing things, and I'll explain why in a second here. So what I do is I all the potential paths, I sort by the risk value. That's what this, this looks a little weird. I looked it up. I learned that today. I can I can basically sort list elements however I want, and I say okay, sort by this, and I do it in reverse order. From instead of from uh, low to high, go from high to low, so that I can pop off the the path with the best uh, the best current risk without having to erase or having to shift everything over. So the the sort and maybe maybe it's actually slower this way than just taking the first element, just the way that everything works out. And so here I say, if, if the end position is in my closed list as I'm progressing through and finding paths and whatnot, if, if it's in there, print it out. Otherwise, I have to go ahead and say, oh, let's try to find the neighbors and see, and then add those paths to the list, and then just, and then, and then, and then try again, try again. And so I, and also I'm learning about this deep copy stuff that, you know, this is a big Python thing. This is a big thing with when you copy data, what are you actually copying? And a lot of Python is copying references to, to, to things. And when you pass a reference, that means you're passing that means you're passing a memory address to something. So you're not passing a copy of the data. You're pass, passing a copy of the address of where the data is. So what that means is if you change something, in one place, you're actually technically changing it in both places or all places because they're all pointing to the same memory. And so for this kind of thing, and since this is so slow, I can't experiment with it until I get it working in the in for part three, is that I don't know if copy and deep copy is actually needed for this. But I but I can I can almost guarantee it is because there's so many so many references being moved around under the hood that I don't need things being changed in one place and then affecting all the other affecting all the other paths along the way. But basically that's this is where we're going here is just to say okay, if there's something on the open list, put it on the closed list and take all the neighbors, throw it on there if you can and then keep going and keep going and keep going. And like I was saying, when you finally do hit this condition that the way everything is sorted that the first one you find is going to be the best one because you're always sorting by best risk, so you're always finding the they're always finding the lowest value. And I could I could I wish I could up oh, where to go there it goes I wish I could tell you that I could run this thing but this thing took hours I don't know how many I went to bed at two in the morning and I was doing other things it's finals week so I went to bed at two in the morning. And sometime between two in the morning and a little after seven when I woke up for my kid that I had this in front of me. And this, like I was describing, there's two separate ways to get from, from point A to point B. And this is where the start of this is from one zero all the way to nine nine. And if you run this out, you, could, you will see that it matches this path exactly. 
and then the other one matches it where I go right instead of down, but right and then down instead of down then right. That's because these two data values are exactly the same. But again, this took hours. And so the, the reason for that is, and this is where I got, I, I, get, I'm, I got thrown off by the description of this. It says, um, that is, don't count the risk level of your starting position unless you enter it. Leaving it adds no risk to your total. And this is, comes down to why this thing takes hours. The reason why this takes hours is because just think of it from the starting position. There are only two places I can go, right? I can go to the right and I can go down. But then from there, I can go back technically because this is not on the closed list because of the way the rules are. But why would you ever go back? Because when, when I start here for the first time, that my risk is zero. But if I go down and then I come back, my risk is two either way. I can go right and back and down and back, and my risk value is going to be two. And you're like, well, why would I ever do that? Why would I ever want to get to the same position with more risk? And the answer is you would never want to do that. So step three here, part three for, for my code, as much as it feels like a step back because, because the first time I ran my code with different code, it solved it in a couple seconds, and now this one takes a couple hours, you're like, why would that be an improvement? Well, the improvement is now what I can do is basically figure out, uh, when I get to a specific square, figure out what the, if, if the risk value is greater than, let's say if the risk value now is greater than the best risk I found in some other path to date, I don't have to continue searching because there's no reason to continue any of those paths. And coming back to this, how many paths am I saving? If I go down and up, and they go, well, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Why would I want to do that? I'm saving potentially millions, billions, trillions of paths of calculations because I don't need to continue down that route anymore because it's always going to be slower than if I just left and never came back. And so that is where I'm going to go with part three here, where I'm going to take this code and I'm just going to add one extra little, uh, little thing. I'm going to add one extra thing to it such that if when I get here, whatever's in my open list, if the risk is greater than the current risk at that square that I found before, then just end the recursion and this thing should speed up dramatically. Instead of hours, I don't know how long it'll take, but it definitely should not take hours to solve at that point. And that's where I'm at at this moment. And the uncertainty of this, will this video ever get it published even is, but I just figured this was a good learning exercise for anyone who is not looking just for an answer, but is looking for the uh, looking for a solution that goes from just the naive solution, and then find a tailored good solution that that works pretty fast. Okay, so here is a solution. This is my part three. There should be a part four to this, but uh, I'm moving on. I'm I'm learning very quickly here that uh, my Python is getting to be pretty good, but there is still room for improvement because I've done A star pathfinding, I've done best first search, I've done all these kind of things in the past. Uh, but learning to do this in a Python environment is slowing, slowing me down here and I got to learn how to, to speed things up because it shouldn't take 40 seconds to get an answer and not, well, I'll run it while I'm talking. And so same thing goes, data is the same thing, element is the same thing. Now I added the best paths uh, list of lists that just keeps track of the best the best look for everything up to a certain point. Let me put a breakpoint in here. And so now the code is mostly the same. This doesn't work anymore, and I'm not gonna, I don't, whatever. It, it just doesn't work. I could probably speed things up if I get rid of all those if statements. And a little bit anyway, couple, maybe I'll take off a couple seconds. But the same thing goes where I'm trying to put neighbors on, but I'm only going into those neighbors if, if by going into them, their path, you know, the pathing values are better than the current one because that means that some other path has found a way that's better. There's no reason to continue on. And so I thought this would, I still thought this would speed things up more than it did, but I got a solution and, and again, please, please help me out a little bit. If there's something, if there's just a little tiny thing that I'm missing that makes this much faster, do I need these deep copies? Do I need to do all this copy stuff? Maybe I obviously copying is 
is uh, taking up a bit of speed here. And I could experiment more with this, but at the moment I have students to assist and grading to whatnot. So the, here is my solution, and you can see then with all paths, you up, I'm, I've exhausted everything. Maybe, maybe that's part of it too, is that I'm not, it takes, it'll probably take shorter to find the, the best path, but I'm finding all paths because this will tell me what is the, basically this tells me what is the shortest distance to any point, any of the 10,000 points. And I only care about, oops, I, I only care about one point. I only care about the one on the back, you know, in the, the lower right hand corner. So that could be part of the reason why it's slower than it needs to be is that I'm, that at a certain point I should be able to say, oh, I found the best value, but maybe, but I'm still, I'm still trying to find things in vain because of the way I set up my list. Don't know, don't necessarily have a chance to come back and think about this, but this was a great problem. This is a great, you know, great computer science problem here. Oh yeah, my solution, of course, comes out as 487. And it's funny though, I was trying out, as I was, as I was trying other solutions, trying to figure it out, I did try 491, 490, 489, 488. And then, and, and for what, you know, because those are the values that came up. And then I finally got, you know, when I finally did it correctly, I do get 40, of course, for my, for the easy case. And then I get 487 here. So this is a longer video than it needs to be, obviously. But this is just to show you guys that, you know, there's always, there's always improvement, there still is improvement, and uh, maybe another time I'll revisit this, come back and solve this, because this is on my, this is on my GUR list. I'm, I'm, I got a result, but I'm not 100% happy with it, but if this was my job, I would continue forth, but this is not my job. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, I'm going to work on part two soon. I'll probably be, I'll probably be, I'm running a little behind now, but uh, that's just the way things go right around the, right around finals week here for me. This is where I start to tail off. So have a great day, everybody. Take care. See you around.